guess this is it. Years of watching and waiting and hoping, and it comes down to this. Do I love you? Do I miss you? I don't know for sure. I hardly know you. But you're the closest thing to family I've got, and I suppose that's something. Goodbye, Auntie. Wherever you are. What a morning. At least I'm home now. It's the front door. I've never seen this kid before in my life. Hi there. Um, hi? So who are you visiting today? Oh, ha ha. Seriously, who are you here to see? Can't let you in unless you tell me. Um... I live here? No, you don't. I know everybody in the building. I don't know you. Really? I live here. Nice try. I know everyone in this building, and I don't know you. Sorry. I've lived here for five years. Then how come I've never seen you before? I have no idea. Doesn't matter. If you lived here, I'd know you. That's all there is to it. Who the hell are you? Jim Birdo. All right. Jim, where's the regular doorman? Geez, where have you been? He's on strike. He's what? Strike. All the building servicemen in the city are doing it. Union rules or something. I stepped in to help because I know everybody. How come nobody told me? Notices were posted all over the building. I put them up myself. If you lived here, you'd have seen them. Who pays attention to things like that? Well, that's not my problem. How long is this strike going to last? I don't know. Could be a couple hours or a couple days. Depend on whether they reach a settlement or not. I don't know the details. Please, I've had a really tough morning. I need to get home. Sorry, lady. Rules are rules. Listen, I really live here. Fourth floor, number 4E. 4E. Hmm. Isn't that apartment empty? No! I live there, and I want to go there. Thank you very much. Oh, hmm. Maybe you're telling the truth. He sees reason. Thank God. Do you have any ID? A driver's license or something? Yes. I have a driver's license. It's upstairs. In my desk drawer. Crap. <laughs> Come on, this is New York. Who actually drives? True, but I still can't let you in unless you prove you live here. I have my apartment key. Will that do? Sorry, no. That could be any key. Well, let's go upstairs and see if it works. And leave the door unattended? Can't do it. Sorry. Out of my way. I'm going in. I wouldn't do that. Why? Are you going to stop me? Me? No. But I've got a cell phone in my pocket with 911 programmed in. All I have to do is hit send and the cops will be here in five minutes. Are you serious? Totally serious. I don't believe this. Okay, I have no ID, and you don't know me. What can I do to prove that I live here? Hmm. Well, can anyone in the building vouch for you? I'm not sure. I mean, I don't really know anybody here. How long have you lived here again? Be quiet. Not all of us are social butterflies. Okay, whatever. Hey, what about Nishanti Sharma? He could vouch for you. Who is this Nis... Uh, Nish... Nishanti. Nishanti Sharma. He lives in 4F. You know, right next door to 4E. You really don't get out much, do you? Your point? Nothing, but I'm sure she could vouch for you. Great, call her up. She's not here. Of course she isn't. So I gotta wait here all day for her. You might have to. Although, she usually goes to Washington Square Park in the mornings. You could look for her there. So, let me get this straight. You want me to go all the way to the park to look for a woman who might be there, and if she recognizes me, then, and only then, I'll be granted the privilege of entering my own home? That's pretty much it, yeah. This is really stupid. I'm not the one who forgot my ID. I'll be back. See you around. 
So near, and yet so far. The windows look into the lobby of the building. There are bars over the windows. I'm not getting in that way. Washington Square. It's been a while since I've been here. Still looks the same, I guess. Although the dog park is empty, I wonder why. Please note, Dog Walking Park is closed until further notice. Hmm. The dog park is empty. There's no reason to go in there. Hmm. Now I'm getting a stress headache. I need to get home. That's her. I recognize her from my building. Nishanti... Sharma, was it? This is gonna be awkward. That's Nishanti Sharma. My next door neighbor, apparently. She's playing some sort of flute. Uh, excuse? I can't do it. I can't just barge up to her. Not in front of all those people. They're all staring. All right, here I go. Hello? Um, uh, no. Okay, that didn't go so well. I just need to work myself up to it. Okay, you can do this. Right, um, crap. Calm down, need to calm down. Right, this is it. Hi, um, can I? Damn it. This is not working. I can't do this. I just can't. No, I can't do this. I just can't. I'll just have to wait until she's finished, or I don't know. I can't do this with all those people staring at me. I don't think so. He's wearing one of those extendable leashes. The dog's leash is tied to the trash can. I'm not untying the dog's leash. Nishanti would kill me. Oh, for heaven's sake. Don't worry, Moti. I'm coming. There, all better. I can't take you anywhere, can I? Oh, it's you, the lady next door. Yeah, hi. Rhonda, isn't it? No, Rosangela. Well, Rosangela, I hope my friend here hasn't been giving you any trouble. That's a cute dog you've got. Isn't he just? Normally he behaves, but he seems to have taken a shine to you. Oh. Great. Anyway, I don't think we've formally met. I'm Nishanti. Rosangela. So you said. Oh, right. Um, yes? I have a strange favor to ask. Go ahead and ask. What are neighbors for? You know that building servicemen strike? Yes. Jim Birdo is covering, isn't he? Yeah, that's the problem, see. He doesn't recognize me. Oh? Oh. So you need me to vouch for you? Yeah, I know this is pretty stupid. Don't worry about it. Moti is getting a little cranky anyway. Let's get you home. Thanks. Mm. Are you all right? I'm fine. I just need to get home. All right. Let's keep walking. Hello, Jim. Hey, Miss Sharma. Jim, this is Rose Angela. She lives here. She does? Okay. Sorry about earlier. Had to be sure. Well, now you're sure. And you must be so proud of yourself. Well... Never mind. Just get out of my way. Well, 
here we are. Yes, finally. That stupid kid. Well, perhaps. But try not to be so hard on him. We're all neighbors after all. Yeah, I guess. <coughs> Looks like somebody's hungry. I'd best get this spoiled puppy fed. Feel free to drop in any time you want. I'll think about it. No thinking needed. I know we New Yorkers don't usually talk to our neighbors, but who cares? The city can be a lonely place, especially when you live alone. I've got Moti. Who do you have? Oh, I have three great roommates. Oh? Yes, um, their names are me, myself, and I. Um, it's a joke. Yeah, I get it. Very funny. I'm sure you're fine. Although your episode in the park tells me otherwise. And your eyes. Well, let's just say the offer stands. Sure. You go home now. We'll see each other soon, Rosangela, I'm sure. Hey. Yes? Um, you can call me Rosa, if you like. Rosangela is kind of a mouthful, you know. All right, Rosa. You have a good day now. What a strange lady. That door leads to Nishanti's apartment. Yeah, she invited me to come over, but so soon? I just saw her. I can't just invite myself over now. Besides, I'm more eager to see my own home. I can't remember who lives there. I'm not knocking on some stranger's door. That door leads to my apartment. Home, thank God. I've never been so happy to see a 500 square foot room in my life. Ugh. It's just a telephone. Hello? This is Dr. Quentin from Bellevue Hospital. Yes? I was your aunt's primary care physician. Did you receive my letter? Yes, I received it. I haven't had the time to come by, though. That's all right. I'm sure you're busy. However, should you find the time today, my entire schedule is free. I... sure. I I'll keep that in mind. Thank you. Good day. If I don't visit him, he's just going to keep bothering me. I suppose I should just get it over with. Some old book review clippings. They're fine where they are. Just a trash can filled with crumpled up novel ideas. I don't need to take the trash out, it's not even full. My computer. It's a bit old, but it lets me access the internet and do my writing. <sighs> I am just feeling so uninspired today. Maybe tomorrow I'll fill up to it, but today? It's just not happening. That leads to my bedroom. It's an oversized closet, but it suits me fine. I'm not ready for bed. This is the only living plant I own. I bought it two years ago. It's still living, despite my total lack of care. I suppose I should trim this plant. Maybe one day. That's Griff, the P.I. Bear. I've had him as long as I can remember. He's in horrible shape, but I don't have the heart to throw him away. Griff is fine where he is. It's my notebook. I don't need my notebook now. This TV was here when I moved in. I don't need to bother. I don't get reception anyway. I must have watched all these a dozen times. I'm not up for watching a movie. Besides, I've seen all of them a dozen times. It's a photograph of Auntie Lauren and me. It's me. I look scared out of my mind. I don't remember when this picture was taken, but I look about four or five years old. 
When I was a little girl, I'd try to talk to my younger self in this picture. I was trying to give myself advice about the future. It didn't work then, and I doubt it would work now. Auntie Lauren, she took care of me after my parents died. For most of my life, Auntie Lauren was a vegetable, slowly rotting away in a hospital bed. I don't remember what she was like before that. This picture is all I have to go by. No, I used to talk to this picture when I was a little girl, but not anymore. It's fake, but kind of pretty. I don't need to touch it. I know these plants are fake. Out of sight, out of mind. There's nothing in these cabinets I want right now. Just a standard stove oven combo. Cook. Why bother when every Chinese restaurant in the area delivers? My window with the curtains firmly shut. No. I open those curtains and a dozen windows can look directly in here. Those curtains stay shut and prying eyes stay out. Come in! Hello, Rosa. Come in, come in. Don't mind the pooch, he's harmless. That's Nishanti's dog. Here, boy. Hi, um, dog. His name is Moti. Right, Moti. See ya. Someone wants a treat, eh? Go get it. This is, um, a lovely place. Thank you. Not the biggest place, but fine for Moti and me. Thanks again for helping me out earlier. I'd probably be sleeping in a hotel tonight if it weren't for you. Oh, didn't you hear? The strike's over. Really? It only lasted a few hours according to the report on the radio. I suppose that's irony. I suppose so. So, you play the flute, huh? Yes, I play the flute. It's called a bansuri. What about you? Do you play an instrument? Me? No, I can hardly play the kazoo. Let's see. You strike me as being creatively inclined. Are you a painter? A writer? Well, I'm trying to be a writer. I knew it. Anything published? Nothing really, aside from book reviews in the Village Eye. Village Eye? You mean that little paper they sell at the stand? You've read it? I've seen it around, but I've never actually read it. Perhaps I will the next time I see it. You have a very nice apartment. Thank you. A bit small, but that's New York for you. You seem very friendly with the people in this building. Well, I didn't grow up here. I didn't realize it was taboo to chat with neighbors. Well, it's not taboo exactly, it's just... Oh, I know, just one of those unspoken things. I've found that most people are pretty friendly, though, once you take the first step. People have their defenses up most of the time. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, I do. Why do you play the flute in the park? It's a place to go, I suppose. I was walking there one day, and I had the bansuri with me, so I started playing. Next thing I knew, I had a bunch of people around me. So I go there as often as I can now. It gets me out of this stuffy apartment, and I admit I like the attention. Plus, Moti loves the dog run there. Well, he did until they closed it down. Why did they close down the dog run? It seemed okay to me. Nobody really knows. It started about a week ago. Dogs started howling, running around like maniacs, acting strange. Some even hurled themselves at the fence door trying to get out. They say it's some kind of high frequency wave that's caused by electric cables or something. Some high-pitched sound that the dogs can hear but we can't. But I know better. You know better? Definitely. I noticed these things. I could tell that things weren't quite right. Something in the air. It's not a high-pitched noise. That would only cause a dog pain. This was more than pain. The dogs were scared. What was there to be scared of? 
I have no idea, but I know what I sensed, just like you did. Me. You sensed it. Don't think I didn't notice. I didn't sense anything. Well, perhaps. Maybe I'm just spouting nonsense. That dog is adorable. Moti! He's spoiled rotten, but he's good company. He's taken quite a shine to you, that's for sure. Huh. Yeah, usually I'm not good with animals. You never had a childhood pet? A pet? No, I had a teddy bear. <laughs> well, you probably had the right idea. Moti's a little thing, but you wouldn't know it from the amount he eats. He's very active, it seems. Yes, that probably explains it. See that box of biscuits? I buy a new one every two days. Moti doesn't have a stomach. He has a black hole that sucks in food. Feel free to give him one if you like. Could I try feeding the dog? Sure, here, take one. I have plenty. Go ahead and feed him. He's always hungry. Well, I'd better go. Take care, Rosa. Come back whenever you'd like. Hey, boy. Um, what do I do now? Just say, go get it. He'll do the rest. Go get it. See ya. Someone wants a treat, eh? Go get it. It leads back to the hallway. The elevator. The sign says I'm not allowed back there. Locked. Whatever's back there, I can't get to it. Looks like a fuse box. Judging by the flickering lights, it must be broken. You need a key to open it. Looks like an internal phone. For paging doctors or patients, I guess. I don't have anyone to call. Some kind of motivational poster. I'm not stealing stuff from the hospital. It says that this floor is undergoing renovations. That explains a lot. Just a small transistor radio. I don't think so. Some small keys. One of them is labeled FB. I assume that means fuse box. I don't think I need any of these keys. It's the security guard for the hospital. Whoa! Hold on there. You want to go in, I gotta clear you first. What's with the lights? Hey, old buildings, you know? Always got problems. If the plumbing ain't broken, the lights are on the blink. It's giving me a headache, let me tell you. Did you have contact with Lauren Blackwell while she was here? Nope. Doesn't ring a bell. She was in, uh, temporary care? No, she was in long term. That's a whole different floor. This is the floor for temp patients. I see. So what exactly happens here on the temporary ward? It's just that. Temporary. Most insurance plans only cover a two-week stay, so this floor is designed for a high turnover rate. That's why the doctor's offices are usually down here. They need to be on hand when the new patients arrive. I'm here to see Dr. Quentin. Uh-huh. Is he expecting you? I've got this letter right here. Okay. Looks legit. Go right in. His name's on the door. You can't miss it. Thanks. Come in. Dr. Quentin? Yes? I'm Rose Angela Blackwell. Oh, hello. Come in, come in. You got my letter, I trust? Yes, I did. Good, good. My condolences on the loss of your mother. Thanks. My aunt is at peace now, wherever she is. Ah, quite right, quite right. So you wanted to talk to me about something? Yes. Yes, I did. But before we go into that, how are you holding up? 
just having a really bad morning. Oh? It's... I'll get over it. Just some stuff I have to deal with. You received the ashes? Yes. I scattered them this morning. I imagine you must miss her. To be honest, I'm not sure what to feel. It's not like I knew her, or even remember her from... before. She's like a stranger. So why did you make it a point of visiting her all those years? She was the only family I had. I guess I felt an obligation, like I had to. And now that you don't have to? What do you want me to say? Auntie's dead, life goes on. So you'll just keep living, is that it? Yes. Keep writing your little book reviews in the paper, right? You know about those? It's hardly a secret. A number of the staff have read them, yes. I didn't think a West Village paper would interest anyone up here. I have to be honest, Miss Blackwell. The staff read them because they were more interested in you. That's really creepy, Dr. Quentin. Their intentions were purely benign, I assure you. It was your aunt they were primarily interested in. They wanted to know more about her family, and you proved to be, hmm, shall we say, less than eager to comply? That's their problem. Indeed. It was your choice to make. Your aunt was an interesting case. And now that she's gone, I was hoping you'd be more forthcoming with me. Just an informal chat. We can discuss her condition. And yours too, of course. You never could find out what was wrong with her, huh? No, we didn't. But she still remains a fascinating case. Fascinating? I don't understand. Forgive me. I speak from a purely professional perspective. I didn't know your aunt personally. Neither did I, but fascinating? It might come as a surprise to you, but yes. But she was practically catatonic. All she did was lie there for 20 years. She'd sometimes twitch or mumble something incoherent, but I wouldn't call that fascinating. Well, as you know, she wasn't exactly catatonic. We kept her sedated. Right. She had outbursts. Yes, and we had to sedate her heavily to keep her calm, especially in preparation for your visits. What are you trying to say? Miss Blackwell, we are not a nursing home. We're not content to merely keep a patient comfortable. We are, after all, in the healing profession. We were trying to heal your aunt, and to do that, we had to speak to her. Wait, you spoke to auntie? We tried to. Did she answer back? After a fashion, yes. If auntie spoke, why wasn't I told? Miss Blackwell, do you remember what brought your aunt here in the first place? Her screaming? Her hitting herself? I was only five years old at the time, but I kind of remember. In order to prevent her from doing harm to herself or to others, we were forced to sedate her. When we limited her medication, she simply reverted to her former state. Her natural state, I'm sorry to add. What did Auntie say? Nothing that made any sense. But one thing was clear. She was in great pain. Pain? What kind of pain? It's difficult to say, but it was immense. How immense? When we reduced her medication, the transformation was dramatic. Her eyes flew open, she thrashed, her screams, well, we had to gag her eventually. My God. I know. Did she still feel it when she was sedated? We don't know. There's no way of knowing. 25 years. I know. Poor auntie. Wait, what do you mean by my condition? Hereditary dementia is my specialty, Miss Blackwell. And in my opinion, there is significant cause for concern. Sorry, did you say hereditary? Yes, two generations. Your aunt and your grandmother before her. My grandmother? Yes, Patricia I think her name was, right? I never knew my grandmother. Auntie Lauren was it, there was nobody else. She couldn't exactly provide me with a family history. Oh, I see. I had no idea. Well, maybe you should have. Did anyone else come in to visit her besides me? No, you are correct. I should have read the family history more carefully. I do apologize, I just assumed... Well, never mind. It doesn't change the fact that you should be concerned as well. Go on. Patricia Blackwell suffered her mental collapse at the age of 55. Lauren Blackwell underwent hers at the age of 40. What are you saying? That the same thing is going to happen to me? No, I'm saying that there is significant cause for concern. So, I had a grandmother. Apparently so. How do you know about her? 
It was in your aunt's case history when she was brought to us. Patricia Blackwell's symptoms were the same word for word. Patricia's case was severe and she was young, but it was chalked up to being an ordinary case of dementia. Until... Until it struck her daughter. Until 20 years later when it struck her daughter, yes. It seems impossible. Perhaps it's genetic, but we've detected no abnormality. You couldn't find any other link between the two cases? None, aside from the family connection. And uh, a name. A name? What name? The documentation we had on your grandmother is minimal, but there was one interesting item noted. During her more lucid moments, she uttered the name Joey. Your aunt, too, would cry out that name on occasion. Joey? Yes. Who's Joey? We've been wondering the same thing for 25 years. So what should I do? Right now, nothing. This type of thing is unprecedented. There is no procedure to go through, no medication I can give you. I just want you to be aware, is all. And come talk to me if, well, there's any concern. Is there anything else you need to tell me before I go? Your aunt had some personal effects in storage. As the next of kin, you're the beneficiary. It's just a folder, some documents and so on. It's being sent to your address via messenger. Oh, well, thanks for that. It's no problem at all. Goodbye, Miss Blackwell. My schedule is fairly open now, so feel free to drop in any time. I'm always happy to discuss my favorite patient. Sure. Thanks. Uh-huh. Apparently, this envelope had no trouble entering the building. Go figure. Looks like it's from Bellevue.
There are some pictures stuck to the back of this letter. Hello? Rosangelina, hi. Hi, Bob. Thanks so much for submitting your last review on time. For once. Yeah. I've got a little assignment for you today. Assignment? Human interest, Blackwell. Suicide. College girl named Joanne Sherman. That's awful, but... You know the Brittany house, the NYU dorm? Yes, but... Speak to some people on her floor. Get a word in with the roommate. Listen. Speak to the RA, too. And hey, see if you can score a picture of the girl. But I don't do that stuff. I write book reviews. Versatility. Time to get out of your comfort zone. Jeremy's over at City Hall covering that strike, so you are it. Get cracking. I hate him so much. Is freelancing for that stupid paper even worth it? Well, I guess it keeps me writing, but... Oh, whatever. I'll just go over there and get it done. It's not like I don't have enough death in my life right now. Maybe this isn't a bad thing. It's like being a real reporter. Sort of. My old notepad should come in handy for this. Is that my dad? He looks so young. I always pictured my dad as being older. I assume that's my mother. She sort of looks like me, I guess. Other than that, she's a total stranger. That's definitely Auntie Lauren. She's looking at something off camera. I wonder what it was. I don't want to ruin the picture. Ugh. I feel like hell and I have to interview college kids. Hopefully this won't take too long. Looks like a fire alarm. Um, no. The sign reads Sarah Kaplan and Julie Gilberg. The sign says Adrian Tucker, resident assistant. Just a bunch of notices. Guitar lessons, study groups, stuff like that. I'm not stealing stuff from college kids. The sign says Sandy Chen and Sonata Munier. The sign reads Amanda Fay and Karen Schreier. It's a drinking fountain. Ew, there's gum stuck to the faucet. I'm not touching that. The sign says Shelley Chenoy and Sarah El Male. There's nobody home. The sign says Kelly Hawthorne and Joanne Sherman. Yeah? Can I talk to you for a few minutes? And who the hell are you? I'm Rosangela Blackwell, with The Village Eye. The Village what? The Village Eye, the newspaper. I've never heard of it. It's for sale in the stand just outside your dorm. You must have seen it. Well, I haven't. What do you want? I'd like to talk to you about your roommate, if that's all right. Jesus Christ. I'm busy with midterms. I've told the campus police everything. Do you have to bother me? Look. So she killed herself. Big whoop. Why is that my problem? I understand that this must be a difficult time for you. Difficult? 
Hell no. It's been great. You know how long I've been wanting my own room? You don't care? Not even a little bit? No, I don't. Why the hell should I? For that matter, why should you? Will you please calm down? Calm down? Who the hell do you think you are? Look, my boss will kill me if I come back with nothing. Can't you help me out here? Fine. You want to know about Joanne? She's dead. She couldn't take the pressure, so she jumped off the roof. Did Joanne act unusual before she died? Nope. Same old Joanne. Studied at her desk all day and slept all night, as usual. Quiet as a little mouse. Is there anything else you can tell me about Joanne? No. Do you have any thoughts on why Joanne would kill herself? Nope. Just another kid who couldn't hack it. So Joanne was a good student? Yeah, sure. Whatever. Joanne never had trouble sleeping. How would I know? You lived with her. Like I pay attention. Do you have a photograph of Joanne that we could use for the newspaper? You want a what? Just a photograph. You'll get it right back. Yeah, right. You think I'm giving you anything? Think again. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Why do you want to know? Just background info for the paper. I don't think so. Suit yourself. Thanks for helping out. Yeah, sure. Whatever. Hmm? Can I talk to you for a few minutes? Are you with a newspaper or something? Um, yeah. Oh, this is about Joanne, isn't it? You know her? Well, I am the RA for this floor. I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't know everybody. The campus police found her around 5 a.m. this morning. Can you tell me about her? Hmm, well, all right. But could you leave my name out of it? I can't promise anything. That's up to the editor. Look, I'll level with you. My job here is already on the line thanks to this mess. I won't say a word unless I have your promise. I suppose I can give my editor a false name. That should be fine. What do you want to know? Could you tell me about Joanne again? Well, as I said, I didn't know her socially, but she seemed nice enough. Nobody ever complained about her. She always had friends around her. She never had any trouble, as far as I know. Her suicide came as a total surprise. Can you tell me anything about Joanne? She jumped off the roof. She died instantly. It was in the middle of the night. There was, there was no way anybody could have stopped her. Make sure you print that. Would you have a picture of Joanne? A picture? No. Why would I? Just asking. Do you know if Joanne had any trouble sleeping? I'm afraid I wouldn't. Her roommate, Kelly, never complained, but that's not surprising. Why is that? Well, Kelly rarely spent the night in her room. She only comes here to study, as far as I've seen. Do you know where Kelly was sleeping? No, it's not my place to ask. Was Joanne a good student? I don't think she had any problems, but of course, the pressure can get to anybody. What can you tell me about Joanne's roommate? Kelly? Have you met her? Yes. Quite a sight, huh? But don't judge her by that. She's the sharpest kid you'll ever meet. She gets straight A's on everything. Really? Yep, she's pre-med. So how did you get to be an RA of this floor? What do you mean? Well, it's a girl's floor and you, well... Aren't? Yes. Well, it's like this. Someone at the registrar thought Adrian was a girl's name. So here I am. None of the girls have complained? Not yet. They seem to prefer it. This sort of thing happens quite frequently. You'd be surprised. They really thought you were a girl? Yes. Well, that's all for now. Thanks for helping out. Just remember, leave my name out of it. Joanne and Kelly were roommates at NYU. That's all I really know about them. Adrian lives a few doors down from Joanne in the NYU dorm. He's the resident assistant for the floor.
If anyone has a photograph of Joanne, it would be Kelly. If only I could convince her to give it to me. Maybe Adrian has a photo of Joanne I could use. Hmm, no, I don't see any connection. Wait a minute, something isn't right. If Kelly's been spending her night somewhere else, how can she know if her roommate was sleeping well or not? Hmm, I think Kelly was lying to me. Your RA told me that you haven't been sleeping in your dorm. Yes, so? You told me that Joanne slept in her room every night. So? How would you know Joanne slept here if you've been sleeping somewhere else? Huh? Oh, well, I just assumed. Did you lie to me? I didn't lie. I just... Oh, screw it. You wanna talk? Fine. What do you wanna know? So what was Joanne really like? To be honest, there's nothing to say. She was studying political science, which is kind of cool, I guess. But she was so... Vanilla. Vanilla? You know, sweet, but not much there. Just a typical college kid. Acted just like everybody else. She seemed proud of it. Did Joanne act unusual before she died? Well, no. Although, the last few weeks she's been talking in her sleep. What did she say? No idea. Couldn't understand her. She swore up and down that she wasn't doing it. She looked a bit scared, though. Scared? How so? Just scared. I didn't need the drama, so I've been sleeping at my boyfriend's place. So you weren't here when she killed herself? No, I wasn't here. N not that it would have made much of a difference. Are we done? I could really use a photo of Joanne, if you have one. Hmm. Alright, just a sec. This was hers. It was on her desk. She won't be needing it anymore. Joanne's the girl on the left. Thanks. Can you tell me anything about Adrian? The RA? He's okay. He helps us out when we need it, and keeps out of our way when we don't. It's the way it should be. Thanks for helping out. Yeah, sure. Whatever. According to Kelly, this girl on the left is Joanne. I assume that this is a friend of Joanne, but I have no idea who she is. I assume that this is a friend of Joanne, but I have no idea who she is. I don't want to ruin the picture. Ugh. This is getting worse. At least I have enough for the story now. I better get home. This is getting bad. I'm here to see Dr. Quentin. Sure thing, you're cleared. Go right in. Come in. Dr. Quentin? Oh, hello. Come in, come in. Do you know anything about headaches? It's hardly my specialty, but I know enough. Why? I've been getting them. Lots of them. In your case, I'd say they were triggered by stress. Are they usually this bad? It varies. Over-the-counter pain medication, rest, that's all I'd suggest. Thanks. I guess I'll head out. Very well. Goodbye, Miss Blackwell. Oh my god, this really hurts. 
sleep. That's all I need. I'll just type up the story and get to bed. Shouldn't take that long. I wish I could go to bed, but I have work to do. No, I can't find any information about Joanne. No mention of Joanne's suicide yet. If it just happened this morning, I doubt that anyone would have published it yet. Right. No more interruptions. Done. Article's finished, picture is scanned, and I am done for the day. No. What's... What is happening? It's gone. The pain. It's gone. That was strange. It was like... Like... What is that? The photo. Something is different about it. I almost don't want to look, but... No, no, no! I did not just see that. I am not going crazy. No, it's just the stress, that's all. Auntie's death, work, life... I just need a rest, that's all. Why do they always do that?